With the new X series of scratch offs from the New York Lottery, you can multiply your winnings up to 100 times the X series from the New York Lottery. It's a better way to multiply. You must be 18 years or older to purchase. Please play responsibly. In this week's episode of Bill's Pod Squad, Kim shares her experience at the Super Bowl. We dive into our fan mailbag. Kim shares a special athlete in her life. We give some advice to girls who are interested in working in sports, and we look ahead to what we are most excited about for this upcoming season. All that and more as Bill's Pod Squad starts right now. Welcome into Bill's Pod Squad, presented by the New York Lottery. Maddie Glab and Bill's owner and president, Kim Pagula, here as your host. Kim, we are officially wrapping up the 2020 season with the new league year set to begin on March 17th. That's also when free agency will start. So not much of a break before things get busy again for the both of us. But on the last episode, we talked about the fact that you'd be heading to the Super Bowl in Tampa. Tampa Bay, I know you're already in Florida, so you didn't have to travel too far, but how was Super Bowl weekend for you? Well, it it certainly was different. Um, That's all I can say. Kind of like really a cap off to the the challenging year that we had all season. First of all, I I just, when I was there at the game, I was like, oh my gosh, like we made it through this whole season. (laughs) Like I am sitting here at Super Bowl, like who would have thought many, many months ago among COVID and all the late night calls and meetings and guidelines that came down, like that we would even get to a place where we would be champion, uh, having a champion and playing the Super Bowl. So that one, just very proud of the whole league of all the clubs, uh, you know, the teams just and the players just being able to get through all of this. Um, I know, you know, takes all of us was kind of one of the themes of the league, but certainly it that was very true. And to see us all there in the biggest game uh, in the world uh, was just amazing to think how far we've come. Uh, I would say, and then also, it was also, you know, in, in some ways it felt like, nothing had changed. So when I say that, I'm talking particularly about the game itself. So once you were in the game and in the bowl, um, I loved how they had these fan cutouts and they were not, listen, we've seen fan cutouts all season long, but there I think probably was like 50,000 or so fan cutouts. So, and they were in between like real people. So from my point of view, when I looked across the field, it did look and feel like a full stadium because of all those fan cutouts. So it was great that the league was, you know, being able to kind of think through how it would look on the broadcast as, but as well as those that are there for the game. And it was, um, so it was, it was just interesting to see. And it was like, and the halftime show, of course, like it didn't in the anthems, like it just didn't seem like, a whole lot has changed in in terms of the game itself from uh, being there in past years. Um, obviously, the little noise level was a little bit lower than usual, but um, from just being in the stadium, it felt good. Now, before though, before the the Super Bowl, the days leading up to it is when the craziness happens. I you know I hate to say, of course, the the game itself is usually the highlight, but for me, it's it's all the other stuff going on around the game, uh, the days leading up to it. Um, no events, like nothing, like nada, like there was no tailgate, there was no concerts, there was no even business meetings. Some of our, you know, always meet with some of our league sponsors or our uh, club sponsors, they're all there. None of those types of meetings happened. Uh, So it was quiet on that front. Um, I will say, you know, thinking back, um, if there was anyone who was gonna win the Super Bowl this year, the, the stars aligned that it was going to be Tampa having the game in Tampa. If you recall, they were not supposed to have the Super Bowl. It was LA mm-hmm. who was supposed to have it this year. And then they got postponed with their new uh, stadium. And so yes. Tampa Bay, we had actually asked Tampa Bay to fill in for that spot. And I don't know. I mean, we're lucky that they were able to have it in a state that allowed, you know, a lot of open uh, fans in their stadium versus LA right now. And then just, you know, I don't think the buzz and the excitement around town would have been as big if neither team was in the Super Bowl. Uh, Mm -hmm. So I think having Tampa in the Super Bowl um, kind of elevated just some of the, you know, the vibes around the game leading up to it, especially without, you know, any events or any big things happening. Uh, I was able to go downtown a little bit, kind of where the NFL fan experience, which they did what they were able to do because it was an outside event so they were you know you could still see a lot of fans and of course a lot of bucks fans and and i got confused because the the bucks are red and and uh um 
the cheeks are red. And so I was like, okay, I couldn't tell. Okay, are you, unless <laughs> the name on the jersey, I was like, okay, are you a Bucks fan or are you a Chiefs fan? So, um, so it kind of made for this great kind of, you just saw a lot of red, right? Like both, both fans, you just saw a lot of red. Um, and so we just saw a lot of fans and I don't know that many of them, when they were outside at least, were, were masking up. <laughs> and so it seemed somewhat normal. I felt like it was also, we when we went, we drove to the stadium, I we got lost, you know, in a way. I shouldn't say we didn't get lost. We Our GPS took us the wrong way, okay? And so we were actually driving through these neighborhoods, right? And I, I did. I felt like on a game day in Orchard Park, when you're driving into the stadium mm-hmm. and you've got cars and people's you know, front, uh, front lawn and you got fans walking up and down, there's flat. So I really got this, uh, this feeling and felt like, you know what, this, it, you know, in this year, having it in Tampa was, and having them win and the excitement that you felt in that town with, without all of the other hoopla that comes with Super Bowl is probably the right, uh, you know, all the stars were aligning for, for them to actually be the Super Bowl winners. So um, on that, re- on that note, it made me feel better anyways, <laughs> made me feel better, but yeah, it, it, it was certainly was unusual. Yeah. It's crazy how all those stars align for, for it to come together in that way. And for Tampa, uh, to be in the Super Bowl. And you talked about all the red that you saw, whether it was the bucks or whether it was the chiefs, I'm in Colorado right now, uh, snowboarding because my brother lives out here. And so we have spent the last weekend on the mountain snowboarding and we went on Super Bowl Sunday before the game. And there were so many chiefs jerseys on the mountain in Colorado, even on Saturday and sun and Friday and I brought a Josh Allen jersey with me to use as my background for for setups and things like that. And I was like, you know what? I've seen too many Chiefs jerseys this weekend. I'm going to rock my Josh Allen jersey on the mountain. And so I had my Josh Allen jersey on Sunday uh, snowboarding. We were at uh, Keystone and got some comments from a lot of people. Some of the Chiefs fans kind of made fun of me a little bit, but a lot of people on the mountain were like, hey, the Bills had a great year. Like next year is year year. I can't wait to see what the team does next season. And, And some of the Chiefs fans even gave me a little fist bump saying you know great game in the AFC championship we'll see you again next year so it was funny to see everybody uh, repping the Chiefs on Sunday in Colorado but did you get a chance to talk to anybody meet anybody did you get a chance to meet the weekend maybe (laughs) (laughs) you know what everything was um was in lockdown I mean I I can honestly say that um I know uh because um, I went downtown and went to the JW Marriott and the Marriott were kind of like the, the NFL league hotels and they were not even, you know, any of the league officials that were there were in lockdown. Like they weren't allowed to go out to, I had invited some of the league staff to dinner with us um, on Saturday night and they gladly accepted. And then, then, or as we got close to the Super Bowl, they're like, we just found out we're not allowed to go to any public mm-hmm. restaurants or to put, we're not supposed to be in bars. They have to have dinner alone. So it was even, it was tough for every staff. So really didn't get to see a lot of people uh, without um, events like the owners, uh, the owner's dinner or the kind of commissioners tailgate party, things like that. I didn't see many owners there. Um, I did see a, a few during the game um, that were there, but didn't really get to interact. And Tampa itself is not, I would say it's not like a, a big walking city so that, you know, you can just go outside and walk around and see the sights. Uh, so didn't really get a chance to do many, you know, many of those types of things. Um, spent some, we did have some partners that went, so just got to spend some time with them. Um, and got to, you know, kind of chill and relax and, you know, take, like I said, take a few days off, but certainly it was a little bit different. And then the game, right? Like that game was uh was interesting right i like so in my in my suite that i had i had uh some really some longtime friends one of them actually used to be my daughter's she used to live with us when she was 15 years old and then her husband actually is uh used to be one of jesse's tennis coaches and they have been they grew up in in, they grew up in sarasota there so i mean way back when i knew them 20 years ago they were always bucks fans and so she just she had texted me and said hey listen like 10 grand is the, is, you know, that's the going rate for uh, a ticket. Do you have any ways of uh, getting a <laughs> ticket for me? So I, I did invite her. Um, so I got to see, so we did had very, like a lot of uh, Bucks fans in our suite. We had um, another friend of mine 
who my daughters, our daughters grew up together. Jesse, the oldest one, they play tennis together. Mm -hmm. uh, her daughter works for the Bucks, and so oh, her, cool. so she came, and and so it was just, it was fun to see some old familiar um, friends that I hadn't seen in a while. So we had a very good uh, Danny Gare, uh, who uh, is in Tampa yeah. right now. Um, he is, uh, I saw him, so he was at the game with us as well. So. Didn't really get to see a lot. Um, listen, when you came in, you kind of just went right to your suite and then mm -hmm. you're wearing your mask. And so I didn't really, you know, you just didn't wander around like you usually do just to kind of sweet hop or see what other people were do doing or just even see the events and the people. I kind of looked over the balcony at, you know, kind of fans trickling in and out. So in, in that regard, it was a little bit different. But once the game started, I mean, tremendous, you know, as you know, I love to to watch and pay attention to you, whether it's, you know, the pregame ceremonies and the mm -hmm. anthems and, and halftime show. So all of that was still, like I said, very much Super Bowl level uh, experience in the game. But the game itself was was odd. Was odd. Now, I mean, I did honestly think that, that Brady with the experience and, mm -hmm. like I said, kind of just the fates aligning that, you know, the Bucks were in it and were in Tampa, felt like he did have an edge. But did not think the game was going to go the way it went. So um, I did get, you know, it, like I said, it's, it, it was, I thought it was going to be a lot closer. And I think many, many did as well, but, um, but you know, it was good to see, you know, the chiefs are not infallible, you know, uh, they certainly have their weaknesses. And I thought you could definitely see the experience. You could see the size um, of, of Tampa in, in their defense, like, really have an effect on them so you know um felt bad I, you know i know that the chiefs also has some you know i i, I don't want to call it drama but distractions i, I don't you mm -hmm. know it's probably not the appropriate word but i know they have some strategy strategy within their yeah. their organization that i'm sure kind of you know didn't help uh, um, as well as you're trying to focus on the game which um but you know like i said it, it was um you know i i think the team that you expected the team to win, and uh, certainly, like I said, it was fated for them to win being there in Tampa. Um, so little, not surprised, just surprised at, at the, the big gap in the game. Yeah, I mean, Patrick Mahomes didn't throw a touchdown. He threw two interceptions. And shout out to Tampa Bay Buccaneers defensive coordinator Todd Bowles for putting that game plan together. I wonder if it's going to be a blueprint going forward and, and how you can beat the Chiefs and how you can get players on your team that are similar to some of those uh, Buccaneers on defense because they really had a great defensive game plan, the right game plan to completely throw Patrick Mahomes off with the pressure and the, the pressure from the defensive line and the pressure from the corners in the secondary. I mean, that's, that's how you do it. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how teams match up against the Chiefs next year and, and to see if uh, some of those pieces are taken from the Super Bowl game and, and put into next season. But to wrap up our Bills season and our first season of Bills Pod Squad, uh, we asked our fans to do a fan mailbag and they could submit some questions for you, Kim. And we had more than 450 <laughs> submissions. So quite a few questions. I'm surprised. To go I mean, through. my life is an open book. I figured there's no more <laughs> questions out there. So I'm surprised at the amount of questions that are still lingering. There were so many. I whittled it down to about 15. So we'll see if we can get through all okay. of them. But first, I want you to guess what was the most asked question? Oh, my goodness. Probably <laughs> are we signing Josh Allen to a long term contract this season that, or this that offseason? Was, that was a big one. Another okay. big one was about fans in the stands for next year another big one was of course what's happening with the stadium that was like every other question was <laughs> about that so we'll start off with the fans I know we probably don't have any official word from the league right now but Sam Ruggiero wanted to know what is the likelihood that the Bills will be allowed to have a full stadium for this upcoming right. season. I don't know if full is going to be expected right away, but I think we can probably expect limited capacity, right? 
Yeah, I feel like, you know, the way I'm thinking of it is better than this year, obviously at zero, but uh, but maybe not quite back to where it was, you know, a couple of years ago. Uh, but, you know, the governor just announced today that they are going to be having fans uh, in arenas. Um, obviously, that bodes well for hockey. And so I feel like there is a lot of work being done to move forward in that direction. I do think the vaccine, the testing piece is going to play a critical role in, in how fans uh, get back into the stadium um, and whether or not it's going to be a full capacity. And not only that, you know, I think there, you know, we realize that even if we are able to have fans, like some fans may just not be comfortable yet, right? Coming back into a large event where there's larger crowds. So I do think that it's going to be limited, uh, but, you know, certainly, and, and I think as the year progresses, the season progresses as the, um, you know, as the vaccines kind of really get more mainstream, I think that will help a lot in getting us back to some, some of those, you know, years where we had, you know, sellouts. So I'm, I'm very optimistic that we're going to be in a better place, um, but also being realistic that we do have a lot of hurdles to get through, but no, you know, and that's, that's next season. That's September. A lot can happen between now and September. So I'm um, hoping all good things and looking forward to kind of really getting some some of our fans back in the stands. Yeah, me too. Uh, Guy Gwizdowski wants to know, is the stadium study finished and is there going to be an update with the preferred option soon? I have to guess that this pandemic didn't help in that regard at all. You had a yeah. lot of other things to worry about this season. <laughs> Yeah, the pandemic did not help. Um, but I will say, you know, if we, yes, there has been a study done by us personally. But as you know, this is a, a you know, collaboration between the state, the county, uh, and the bills organization. So they have yet to do a study or have yet to, uh, to meet. And that is kind of our top priority in this off season to push now, you know, now that we've kind of have COVID um, along. I know the state obviously is busy getting, you know, the economy back in New York State. So, but we are hoping that, you know, we can maybe somehow be a part of that, but certainly um, going to start those discussions soon. So I, I totally un understand everyone's anticipation. <laughs> um, but like I said, just had a little wrench thrown in there. But, um, you know, I, like I said, we will work with our, the county and the state and progressing that along. Erin Noon says, my daughter is 14. She is smart, energetic, and at the top of her class with grades. She has become one of the biggest Bills fans I know. I'm so proud of her. She says she wants to work for the Bills someday. She noticed two, the female presence with Maddie and Kim and the officials in the Super Bowl. What is your advice to the young females wanting to get into the NFL and be part of these great teams? As a father, I want to support her in any way I can, and this is why I'm asking. I'm sure other fathers may want to know how you both feel about being a successful woman in the league. So Kim, I'll have you answer that one. Well, why don't I have you answer that? I just answered <laughs> the first two questions. You're a successful woman in the league. So I think you should go first this time. <laughs> okay, okay. I guess I'll go first. <laughs> um, so his question is, what is your advice to young females wanting to get into the NFL and be part of these great teams? I think my advice is to not worry that you're a woman or anything like that. I think right now is the perfect time to jump into support into sports as a female. I think diversity is something that's being um, pushed in all leagues right now. And I think we can really see it with the Bills and so many other teams in the NFL. Shoot, we saw it with the Buccaneers. They have two female coaches on their staff on defense and the strength training coach. And uh, we saw Sarah at the Super Bowl as, as an official doing a great job. So I think this is the perfect time to jump into the industry. I think you have to work really hard because everybody wants to work in sports. This is the dream job for so many people and you have to outshine everybody else to get into this industry. So it comes with a lot of hard work, a lot of saying yes to doing whatever, even if it's not something you want to do. Uh, you have to work your way up from the ground floor and that means volunteering for a lot of things and doing a lot of things for free. Um, that's how I I got to where I'm at right now 
now. And thankfully, I get paid for what I do. But in the beginning, I wasn't getting paid for working uh, for a local TV station, working 40 hours a week, just doing it so I could put it on my resume. Um, but it's a great industry to work in. I've learned so much about myself and the people around me and just covering our players every day. They're such an inspiration. So that's my advice is to go for it and to not let anybody tell you no. Right. No, great advice. And I agree with you. This is a great time to be in sports. And I will say, you know, I, I know you're focusing on the female aspect of it, but you know, that used to be kind of like, how do I overcome being a female, right? And, right. and wanting to work in sports. And now it's very much embraced. I say the clubs, um, leagues, teams, I think are, are looking for, for females, for their, um, for their experience, their skill set, for their diverse thought. And so I would say, you know, be proud of that fact. Don't think of it as a hurdle that you need to get over in, in order to get into sports, that, that clubs are really embracing what uh, women can bring to the table, whether it's in the football, whether it's on the business side or wherever. So I would never use, don't use that as kind of like feeling like you need to um, really work on that part of it. I mean, be who you are, I guess, be authentic because that's what teams are looking for. And they really are looking for new ways of thinking and new new ideas. And I think that comes with, of, of all, like you said, um, bringing that diverse thought into an organization. So be happy with that. And then I would say as well, Maddie, you know, not everyone got here in a variety of different ways. There is no right way. There is no perfect way. I don't have a, you know, do this, then this, then this, and then of, of course this will happen. <laughs> um, so you have to be open, similar to what you said about, you know, kind of being open to doing anything and, and everything if you have to. Um, I would say just also, you know, if you don't get it from, you know, day one, like you never know what path gets you there. Mm -hmm. I came from a different path. You may have come from, you know, strictly sports, but through different avenues, whether it was TV or journalism or, or college, but it comes in all different ways. So um, always be open to the opportunities, even if it's not in sports and you're like, well, how do, how is this job going to get me into sports? Honestly, you never, you never know. And I think when you excel and you can prove yourself in, in every stop along the way, that just helps, um, Give you so much momentum you know actually when that opportunity you be so ready when that opportunity in sports comes along so those are my two cents <laughs> Yeah, I love that. You should feel empowered as a woman working in sports. You shouldn't feel like you have to change yourself or act more like a guy or something like that just because um, the game right now is played by men, at least at the NFL level. But we've seen in college football, uh, women have played the game this season and there are tackle football leagues for women. So you shouldn't change um, you know, what you think or how you act just because you are a female in this industry. So I love that response too, Kim. Uh, Danny Neiman wants to know, what do you as the owner of the Bills do to stay in touch with the coaches and players in the long and dreadful off season? season. Well, <laughs> it's not as long and dreadful as you might think. Uh, you know, there there's oh, things called OTAs. There's, you know, mini camp. There's rookie symposiums. There's So there is actually, as you said, it's a 365 uh, days a year sport. Even though we are done with the regular season, there's obviously the draft there's the combine and i know it's going to look a little bit different again this year so that interaction is not there as much and so that's you know we participate in all of those things um as you know i you know i'm very hands-on as well as terry and so we really enjoy being a part of of the scouting meeting so keeping in touch with our personnel staff um and coaching is involved in those areas as well during uh during the draft you know kind of um spending time with um just with the staff as they kind of plan for next year. You know, we always have a re reca recap of the season. We had that with Sean and, and Brandon already. Um, I know I like to give them a little bit time off too. They, you know, they take some scheduled time off, but then really with OTAs, you know, we get to see practices. We get to see, see the guys. I mean, in normal years, you know, we're up there during uh, some of the OTAs and especially uh, mini camp, just, you know, being able to have that week and seeing everybody in, especially your new draftees and things, rookies. So there is a lot of opportunities to keep engaged, to keep connected with the players and with our, our coaches. And sometimes though, I just like to like, you know, just be quiet and be like, Hey, saw you all year long, <laughs> like, go, go back home, enjoy the time with your family and your other hobbies. And, you know, we'll, we'll connect again soon. 
Yeah, I have to guess uh, that Brandon Bean is going to be doing some golfing in the next yes. couple months as he is in the off season, as well as many players love to hit the links uh, when they get those couple months off. But Danny also had a bonus question. He said, did you bake any cookies for Super Bowl Sunday, even though our bills were not playing? I did not. No, no, that wouldn't been, that would not have been right. Uh, no, I did not. I'm actually, cause I was here in Boca. I actually drove over to Tampa uh, on Friday. I think Friday afternoon I drove over there, but no, no cookies. I didn't really have a kitchen in my hotel uh, and they weren't deserving, you know, let's no. say like they mm -hmm. weren't deserving. So I'm going to keep it uh, within the, our organization and within our team. I love it. Uh, Richard, I did, I did enjoy, I did enjoy kind of having a break. Cause I mean, for a while there, I was baking like every week. So I did enjoy kind of getting a break. My waistline enjoyed it as well. Yeah. And it's not like you're baking like 20 cookies. When you bake cookies, right. you, you yeah. bake for the it's masses. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Perks wants to know how much time do you take to mentally reset yourself before diving into next season? Is there ever any downtime? Oh, I, I wish I, you know, <laughs> I need to do a better job. I know I need to do it, but let's see. I came back, uh, I think on a Monday, maybe this, um, came back Monday afternoon. I came back to Florida uh, after our last game. And next day I went to the office. <laughs> I mean, I have been there every, every, every day since. Yes. Um, I, you know, we, well, we got hockey starting. Um, well, it's already started. And then, as you know, we ha we had mm -hmm. some health scares with that. And so working through that. So I do not do a good job of that. I would say the only time I really spend maybe is um, at night, you know, I, I'm a big mm -hmm. binger and TV just kind of gets my mind off of something yep. else, like, like just watching some other, you know, fake life. So I think maybe sometimes I do that. And, and then of course I stay up too late binging. <laughs> and so then I, and then I'm tired. So I don't know. It's not really a good, <laughs> good thing to do to rest and, and rejuvenate. But um, I think, you know, maybe sometime this summer we'll figure something out. Um, just haven't thought of it yet. <laughs> Yeah, I know a I'm, lot of I'm, people are going to be here, be in Florida next week, though, with the President's Day mm -hmm. uh, happening. I know a lot of people are, are planning or they're already here or they're yeah. planning on coming down at least to some area of, of Florida. So I've been I was talking to someone at the league today and I was like, oh, you know, I said, how's the weather in New York? He's like, oh, I'm in I'm in Florida. I was like, oh, OK. Yeah. <laughs> so with this remote working, like I feel like people are are closer everywhere. than I thought. Yeah, they're closer mm -hmm. than I thought. So even well, like you are, you're in Colorado. Yeah, I mean, it's perfect. It's nice to, to get a different change of scenery from uh, my apartment in Buffalo, because you know, everything was so strict during the NFL right. season, rightfully so, but it's nice to still be safe and work from somewhere else for a week or so. But I'm going to call your yeah. office and tell them that they have to keep your door locked so you can take a couple days off and refresh <laughs> there. <Kim. laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I will eventually. <laughs> Brian Waters wants to know, he said, we have had Sean McDermott, Tremaine Edmonds, Mitch Morse, and Josh Allen drop by the motorhome lot in the camping lot. And the day before home openers, he says, they do this. They yeah. drop by their motor home. He says, when are you going to come say hello? We will even step up our wine collection if you <laughs> do. Well, I, that's Terry. So the, the wine would be for Terry. I'm, I'm not a good drinker. I mean, one sip and I, I will be, I'll be done for the whole game, which will not be good. So, um, so no wine for me, but, but no, definitely I will. I just have to be reminded what happens sometimes is, you know, you start to get busy and all these things you want to do and you're like, Oh, I got to do this. I got, I need to, I want to do that. And then the day comes and you just start kind of, you know, mm -hmm. doing your thing and then you forget. So I need you to remind me. I'd be happy to stop over, bring over some cookies. Yeah. I just, you got to remind me sometimes yep. I'm getting older. I forget. So Maddie, that's, that's on you to I remind got me. Hey. Opening day. Right. We've got right. stuff to do on got opening it. day before the game. That's We're right. going to the camping lot. <laughs> yep. That's right. Barry Friedman says, who is your favorite athlete living or deceased? Oh, uh, well, I mean, I know it sounds corny, but I'm going to have to say my daughter, <laughs> um, you know, yeah, I, I know it's obviously the obvious. Um, so she had you know, a great I, match this weekend too. She did. She did. She um, beat uh, Azarenko, who has won the Australian Open twice. Um, I was like, 
dang it, I wish this was the final and not the first round, <laughs> unfortunately. But uh, tennis is such a tough sport and so proud of her. You know, I know I've told many of people this, but she was kind of our first sports team, a team of one, but still mm -hmm. she's kind of our, our first, you know, has totally the whole process of her growing up and, and training as an athlete and, a, and, a, and then going actually, you know, professionally, um, you know, it certainly taught me a lot. Um, and just like I said, so proud of her that, she stuck by it. It's just tennis is such a hard sport. She mm -hmm. quarantined for two weeks in a hotel. Um, it, you know, you're playing, you know, like I said, she had a great win. It was only her first round match. Um, and, you know, you think about for you to be really to win, like say a Super Bowl, or, you know, one of the grand slams, the Super Bowl of, of tennis. And there's four of them, right? So you got four times you can, you can win it. So that's great. But you got to, play for two weeks straight you're 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 in another country for two weeks i mean you've got to play match after match after match and, and win them all so it's just it it is tough it's a tough sport and really just proud of her and so i would say she was my favorite athlete although i will say i did not even see her match i saw the last two points i didn't know it, i didn't know it was on <laughs> <laughs> until <laughs> until somebody texted i was like what wait because i thought it was um since it was a first round match i thought it was mm -hmm. not, like not on network tv yeah, and right, i didn't know right. that i didn't know that they they put it on espn during during the match so <laughs> so <laughs> i got to see the last two points so but. i mean anyways when she's playing don't you sometimes not even like to yes. watch because it's too nerve-wracking it, it is. Yeah. I, that's, that's why I didn't really make a point of like watching one. It, Cause I was like, Oh, well, it's not on TV anyway. So, you know, yeah. I'm just, I'll just, and um, you know, just it's first round and you know, whatever. So, but then when it was on, I was like, everyone starts texting me. I was like, what, what? And, you know, ran it out <laughs> into the other room and, you know, Terry said the same thing with him. He's like, I didn't even know she was on. I only got to see the two <laughs> points. So I was able to watch it afterwards on demand. That's so that was, yeah. Good. Yeah. So it's fun to watch it when you know the outcome sometimes. Yes, it's, it's not as you don't have those nerves. You just know yeah. it's going to be a happy ending. I totally agree. We'll do one more question. It's from Kristen Daly. She says, this is a hypothetical slash lighthearted question. If the Bills go to the Super Bowl next year, who do you want to see in the halftime show? And who would you want to sing the national anthem? Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. I don't know. I don't know about that. Like, listen, I, you know, I didn't, I, the weekend, I, it was so funny. My, <laughs> so not to embarrass my husband, but we we're at dinner and I think we we're talking about Super Bowl. My daughter Kelly is there and, you know, he said something about, we we're talking about the Super Bowl and the halftime and it's like, you know, what's going on? Who's performing over oh, the weekend? He's like, yeah, like, yeah, this weekend, like who's, who's you know, <laughs> what's going on? And Kelly's like, it's the weekend. He's like, yeah, I, I know. I'm, I mean, at the game, like who's going to be, you know, what are you talking about? We're, she's like, we're talking about the weekend. And, and I was like, wait, no, it's the weekend. He's like, it's an, it's a performer. It's an entertainer. It's like a singer. And he's like, who is that? Cause his name's the weekend. So it was just, it was, it was funny. <laughs> um, so I'm sure there's some great ones out there. I will tell you that, you know, after you stop having little kids, um, your, your kind of what's going on in, in pop culture kind of goes downhill because, you know, before you're driving your kids to school and of course they want to listen to this radio station yeah. or they're talking about this or that. Um, but you know, when your kids are gone and out of the house, you like your world just of pop culture just doesn't, it doesn't exist anymore. So I'm sure that there are some good acts out there that are great performers that I just can't come to mind right now for me. Um, and in terms of the anthem, uh, you know, honestly, every one of them has done such an amazing job. The, the one in, in Tampa, um, that duet, I mean, I, that was, mm -hmm. that was awesome. That was such a great performance. So, um, I don't know. I think I'd just be happy with whoever is there. I'd just be so happy to be in the game that, you know, you could <laughs> Kermit matter. the Frog out there and I would think it would be awesome. Who knows? Hey, your pop culture is pretty good. We had Benny the Butcher on the podcast, so maybe he'd be yeah, a good you have to teach me a little bit, though. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. So those are all of our fan questions. Just a big thanks to everybody who submitted them because you guys submitted so many great ones. It took me a couple hours to try and make the list shorter than about 50 questions. So big thanks to everybody on that and great answers on those, Kim. But to close it out, let's do a top three. Three 
our top three is going to be our top three things that we are looking forward to for the 2021 season. Uh, you can kick us off here with number one. I'm sure we'll have some similar responses. So yeah. I'll probably be piggybacking off of you for these. Obviously, you know, you it's, it's what I miss the most, and that's going to be fans. So I'm looking forward to having fans back, uh, fans back every week, not just like, you know, at the end of the season or in the postseason. So just having fans back and have that, that live energy um, on game day and just seeing everybody just having so much fun at an event, being with their family and their friends and the tailgates and you know, all the things that are so traditionally Bill's Mafia that, that we know are happening out there in the lots, like the, in the, camp, like the camper lots. So I'm just really looking forward to getting fans back. It's just, there's nothing like it. You can't recreate it. You can't, um, every, you know, every game is different. So it's just something you, we can't ever get back um, that, that feeling. So I'm just really looking forward to, to having fans back. Yeah, I will piggyback off of that by saying I am looking forward to no COVID whenever that is next year. I'm just going to say next year we're going to be without COVID at some point. Hopefully uh, this vaccination can get to um, as many people as possible by next year and we can be at a point where we can have a lot of fans in the stands like you talked about. I'm just looking forward to normalcy again, uh, being able to walk around the office. We might still be masked up, which is totally fine, but just being able to do, you know, some extra things that we might not have been able to do last season, um, maybe getting to leave my apartment on a regular basis <laughs> next year. I'm excited to do that. But yeah, everything surrounding the football season that was different this past year. I'm looking forward to um, some loosening of those guidelines for next season uh what's number two for you number two um i would say probably you know just the fact of not of uh, well you, you kind of said it with the covid um okay so i'm gonna go with this one i'm gonna go with the josh allen <laughs> so i'm gonna go with josh allen kind of just you know as since we've drafted him every year, we've seen him evolve. Um, we've seen, we've seen whatever, you know, kind of areas that we we felt he need to improve upon. We, we saw him really work on that and, and it come to fruition in the next season. So this year, I'm just looking forward to, to seeing what that is going to be next year and how Josh uh, evolves into the quarterback and um, you know, things that he works on this, this off season. Um, so I'm just kind of looking to see that next evolution. And I think, you know, as we talked about that playoff loss uh, with the Texans, you know, last the previous year. And I think that really helped, you know, this year as we went into even further in the playoffs. So, you know, the loss in, in the championship game, like how does that fuel him? And and what, you know, what are we going to see out of that into next year? So really looking, looking to see how that evolves and looking forward to that. And he's going into year four with Brian Dayball and Ken Dorsey. I mean, how often do you get to have an offensive coordinator uh, for that many seasons and also a quarterback's coach who's been with you for multiple years as well. That's something that I would say happens seldomly for quarterbacks who are new in the league and, you know, trying to figure things out. There's so, there's so many coaches coaching changes now in the NFL where um, sometimes a team wins big and, and that offensive coordinator is gone the next year. Sometimes a team is struggling and that offensive coordinator or that head coach is gone within a couple of years. So you really don't get to build that camaraderie and chemistry with each other. So I'm really excited, like you said, to see where Josh Allen grows and where he can go next season, knowing that he has his right hand man in uh, Brian Dayball right next to him leading the way uh, just with what they were able to do this season. What's number three for you? Well, number three for me is a little bit more selfish. Uh, it's going to be, uh, you know, like I said, kind of that COVID post COVID, the ability to travel with the team. So this year I was able to travel with the team, but it was under such strict conditions. You really just don't get that. Um, you know, I just so enjoyed like, you know, when, 
in a normal season, we travel with the team. You, you know, we usually go out to dinner the night before with, with Brandon and Joe, and we talk whether it's players or team, things going around the league, but just, you know, kind of just talking amongst ourselves and just bonding and spending those times. So I miss that. I, I miss being able to really interact uh, with people and not, you know, only be restricted to certain spaces or, or my hotel room and not being able to go out. I mean, this year we had a ton of awesome, awesome places and for our away games. Yes. Didn't get to do any of that, right? Like got, got Shake Shack down in, you know, in the hotel lobby to take up to our room. Like that was the extent of, um, of our world travels, you know, uh, being in, in the football world. So I really look forward to, I, I miss that. Like I said, miss the traveling, miss being able to see other cities, miss, miss the fans coming in. You know, it's always fun to see fans at the hotel and, um, you got to see a lot of our players, their families would come in, their parents, and always got to meet some of those in the hotel when we traveled. And, you know, just hanging out at breakfast, you know, on game day with coaches or with some of the players or staff, just miss all that. So selfishly, I'm going to say I really look forward and I hope, I'm crossing my fingers, that we were back at least to that place where we can mm -hmm. engage with each other um, just, you know, more one-on-one -on -one and, and not – have this wall of protocols and, and COVID related, you know, issues in front of us. Yeah. I'm going to uh, be selfish on this one too. I cannot wait to interact with people face to face next year. And hopefully we are at a place where we can do that next year. I'm, I'm not sure if we're going to do a whole nother year of zoom interviews and things <laughs> like that, but I'm really hoping we don't. I'm hoping uh, we can go back to some of the regular media availability and access that we get just being able to talk to players in the hallway or, or coaches in the hallway or, um, you know, having conversations with players after practice, those, those one-off things that you get when you're in person with people that you don't get over zoom. That's something that I missed so much. And it was my second season with the team. So, you, you know, your first season, you're trying to like learn everything, build these like relationships just kind of know people's names and, and know a little bit about them and then year two I was like oh I'm really excited to start to know everybody on a deeper level and build those connections even more and then the pandemic hit and it's like well everything can be over zoom uh, so that may not happen so I'm looking forward to um, continuing to build those connections and the relationships with the people inside of the building at One Bills Drive I mean such a such a great place filled with so many great people so I'm hoping we can be more in person next year in that way. Um, but that'll wrap up our top three things. Kim, what a first season of Bill's Pod Squad. I mean, we've had some amazing guests from Josh Allen, Stefan Diggs to to Bill Cower, Aaron Andrews, Benny the Butcher. Oh, I saw, I saw Bill. I saw Bill at Super Bowl. He was you at did? my hotel. There was one person I did meet. Yes. I saw Bill. Yep. <laughs> That's so, yeah, awesome. He was telling me how he got a lot of flack because he picked he picked the Bills uh, for the, the Chiefs game. I think all his, you know, his co-hosts all picked the Chiefs, and I think he picked Cleveland as well. And so he was saying how he, he was <laughs> his uh, his coworkers uh, broadcast team were, were giving him a hard time. So he's doing well though. That's awesome. I mean, yeah, we've had, he was a great guest on the podcast. We, we had so many fun names, um, so many people that, you know, so many people that we didn't know together and we got to interview and um, just a really great season and, and having you as a co-host. I mean, your insight and your perspective is so interesting. And I think our fans really loved hearing from you and feeling like they could relate to you through a podcast during a pandemic. Like there's no other owners in the NFL doing a podcast, Kim. That's that's it, pretty badass. I tell you what, it was so much fun. I didn't know what to expect. I mean, I just, you know, like the typical person, I just listened. Um, I didn't know how the chemistry was going to go, like the interview process, all of that. So it just, it came so easy. I think that's what made it really fun. It wasn't, didn't seem like work at all, right? It just seemed like, oh, when, you know, when are we doing it? And then we just roll with it. So um, thank you, Maddie, for making it so, so easy on me, um, but really enjoyed and had a lot of fun. 
Yeah, it was a great time. I enjoyed it too. Didn't feel like work at all. And that's when you know yeah. you're doing the right thing for sure. But we're going to continue Bill's Pod Squad throughout the off season. Not sure what the schedule is going to look like yet. So keep an eye out on, on what we have on the horizon because we will definitely be releasing the schedule within the next couple of weeks. But uh, a big thank you to all of our listeners uh, who are with us through episode one until I think this is maybe our 20th episode, 21st oh, wow. episode, 21st first episode so uh thanks to everybody for tuning in and listening and being a part of the conversation submitting questions things like that um you know we appreciate our listeners and and kim appreciate the time because we know you are busy 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 well that's okay because that's what it's all about our fans it being part of a team being part of a community and that's what this podcast was all about so um really looking forward to what's ahead and you know like going into another full season of podcasts i'm i'm in yeah, i'm in too we are looking forward to what's ahead just like you said i uh, can't wait but kim enjoy the off season enjoy the I downtime will. please take a couple days everybody <laughs> who's listening to you guys deserve a little bit of a break too i mean we were all so committed to this team from week one uh, into the playoffs so everybody take a little breather refresher a free agency is just over a month away. I cannot believe it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. All right. Thanks, Kim. We'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for listening. All right. See you.